Hello, everybody. This is Mr. Walker. Our topic today is to uh, how to divide tens, hundreds, and thousands. By the end of this video, you will be able to divide dividends of tens, hundreds, and thousands. And in this example here, we have 1,200 divided by 4, but we could also express that as 1,200. So this is what we mean when we say, uh, in this case, 100. Well, we would work from left to right. 4 does not go into 1, but 4 can go into 12. I'm going to draw that line there. And we can use our knowledge of multiplication to help us solve. 4 times n is equal to 12. I know that 4 times 3 is equal to 12. I'm going to use both of these numbers. 3 on top and 12 on the bottom. I see that I have an exact match, so I don't have any remainders. There's no zeros to bring down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to count my zeros, one, two, and write my zeros. So 1,200 divided by four would be 300. We could also express it in this way. Same problem, 1,200 divided by four. If I take my 12, I'm just going to use my same steps here, that 4 times 3 is equal to 12. So it would be 3 and count my zeros, 1, 2, and write my zeros, 1, 2. Remember when we're working with division, our vocabulary, our large number that we're going to be dividing is called the dividend. The number of equal groups that we're looking for, in this case four, is the divisor. And our answer up here, in this case 300, is the quotient. Please keep in mind place value. In this case, we're talking about the place value of the dividends. Uh, 1,200 is our dividend for this example. The one would be in the thousands, the two in the hundreds, and then we have the tens and the ones. And when we wrote our answer, notice that that was the three was in the hundreds. It's not a hard, fast rule, but it's a good habit to get into in uh, keeping your place values lined up, especially when the problems get a little bit harder and we move into decimal problems in the future. We said that our lesson deals with dividends of tens, hundreds, and thousands. By tens, we mean like counting by tens, 10, 20, 30, 40. But remember, that could really go into the hundreds uh, and, and up higher. And usually, when you're thinking of tens, you're just thinking of a, um, a dividend with one zero. Hundreds would have two zeros, for example, 100, 200, 300, but we could also express that as 1,200 and 1,300, and then thousands would have three zeros. So that's what we mean by tens, hundreds, and thousands. Our steps are pretty easy. Just remember to work from left to right, meaning that on our dividend, we work from left to right. We're going to use multiplication to find our division facts. And we're going to count the zeros and write the zeros. 280 divided by 7. Well, 7 will not go into 2, but it will definitely go into 28. 7 times n equals 28. Again, we got our 7. And then our 28 is over here. Well, 7 times 4 is equal to 28. We're going to use both of our numbers. The 4 goes on top. 28. We can see that this is an exact match, and we do not have 
any remainder, and we won't need to bring any numbers down. I'm going to count my zeros. That was our next step. I count my zeros, which is 1, and I write the zeros. So our quotient is 40. If I show it in this manner, 280 divided by 7, I find out how many times 7 goes into 28. And we showed that step up here, and we said that that was 4. And then you count your 0 and write your 0. 4,200 divided by 6. 6 does not go into 4, but it does, does go into 42. So we're going to write our equation. 6 times n equals 42. We solve for n. That would be 7. We're going to use both of these numbers, the 7 is here up on top for our quotient, and 42. And you can see that in this case, they are an exact match, and we do not have any remainder. We don't have to bring these zeros down because they have no value. So we just count our zeros, 1, 2, and write. So our quotient is 700. If I show it in this style, we would just work with the 42. We did that step up here. That would be 7. Count our zeros. 1, 2. And write our zeros. Thirty two thousand divided by four, working from left to right. Four does not go into the three, but it does go into the thirty two. So we would say that four times n equals thirty two. If we solve for n, that would be eight. We're going to use both numbers. 8 up here, and a 32 to check for our remainder. You can see in this case, we do not have any remainder. I'm going to count my zeros, 1, 2, 3, and write my zeros, 1, 2, 3. So our quotient is 8,000. If we show it in this style, we work with the 32. We do our equation in a similar way, so that would equal 8, and we count our zeros, 1, 2, 3, and write our zeros, 1, 2, 3, and so our quotient is 8,000. Solve 1,500 divided by 5. Five times 10 equals 15. I'm going to solve for n. That would be 3. I'm going to circle both numbers, and I'm going to use both numbers to 3 up on top for our quotient, and the 15. And you can see that we do not have a remainder because they're the same. We count our zeros, 1, 2, and write our zeros. And if we did it in this way, it would be a similar operation. The 3 comes down here. We count our zeros, 1, 2, and write our zeros, 1, 2. So 1,500 divided by 5 is equal to a quotient of 300. Let's try a word problem. Jenny can read 480 words in 6 minutes. How many words per minute can Jenny read? Say 480 was total amount of words. Even though they're not showing the number in standard form, they are showing the 6 in word form, so we can use that. I'm going to put that in standard form. 6 does not go into 4, but it does go into 48, so we're going to multiply 6 times n is equal to our 48, and then I'm going to solve for n. That would be 8. We're going to circle both of our numbers and use both of our numbers. 
48 on the bottom. You can see that we don't have any remainder. Count your zero and write your zero. So how many words per minute? In this case, our answer would be that it is 80 words per minute. Okay, one more. A plane flew 1,800 miles, or you could say 1,800 miles in six hours. If the plane flew the same speed each hour, how many miles per hour was the plane flying? Okay, this would be 1,800. Divided by our six hours. Six does not go into one as we work across, but six can go into 18. Six times n is 18. I'm going to solve for n. That would be three. We're going to circle and use both numbers. Three goes on top. And 18 on bottom, we have no remainders. We're going to count our zeros, one, two, and write our zeros, and we get a quotient of 300. So how many miles per hour was the plane flying? So the plane was flying 300. I'm just going to put MPH, which stands for miles per hour. OK, so to review today, our lesson topic today was how to divide uh, tens, hundreds, and thousands. And we said that we worked from left to right. We still continue to use our multiplication knowledge to help us solve division. We count the no total number of zeros in the dividend, and we write the total number. And we also today reviewed how we can show it in a uh, standard division form. All right, thanks, everybody. I'll see you next time.